This podcast is on the topic of vapor pressure as we continue our look at liquids and solids. Now, vaporization is the change from liquid to gas at the boiling point, and it's distinct from evaporation, which is the change from liquid to gas at a temperature below the boiling point. Heat, or enthalpy of vaporization, the delta H VAP, is the energy required to vaporize one mole at one atmosphere. And it is a state function that we will be using. Now, vaporization is endothermic. It requires heat. That energy is required to overcome intermolecular forces of attraction because the particles have to move from the liquid state to the gaseous state. So that's why beaches, for example, are cool because of the water. It's also why we sweat. That's how we cool ourselves. Okay. Now, condensation is the opposite. It is the change from gas to liquid. We can achieve a dynamic equilibrium with vaporization, where vaporization and condensation are both occurring in a closed system. By closed system, we mean that the matter can't go in or out, so we put a stopper in this flask. Okay. Well, what do we mean by dynamic equilibrium? Equilibrium will be studied further in a future chapter. But that's chemical equilibrium. This is physical equilibrium. But it's dynamic. When first sealed, the molecules gradually escape the surface of the liquid, and the pressure of the gas above the liquid goes up. Okay? However, as the molecules build up above the liquid, some condense back into being a liquid. When the rate of vaporization and the rate of condensation end up being the same, we have what we call a dynamic equilibrium. That's because the rate of vaporization equals the rate of condensation, and there is no observed change in the system. Because the molecules are constantly changing phase, we say it's dynamic. And because the total amount of liquid and the total amount of vapor in that flask remains constant, we say we're at an equilibrium. Well, vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is the pressure above the liquid at equilibrium. That's what we define it as. Liquids with high vapor pressures evaporate easily. They're called volatile. That's things like nail polish remover, some solvents. A lot of perfumes and colognes, in fact, have very high vapor pressures. Otherwise, you wouldn't uh, detect their, their scents. And vapor pressure also decreases with increasing intermolecular forces of attraction. The stronger the molecules are held together, the more likely they're not going to vaporize very easily. So bigger molecules, less vaporization. More polar molecules, less vaporization. In both cases, that means a lower vapor pressure. Well, vapor pressure increases with increasing temperature. The reason being that molecules have more kinetic energy and thus they're moving faster. Vapor pressure can be easily measured with, and actually in, a barometer. Here we have a barometer. At sea level, air pressure will support a column of mercury 760 millimeters my meters high in that barometer. Okay, That's assuming we're at exactly one atmosphere, and that is what we always assume. If we inject a volatile liquid into the barometer, it'll rise to the top of the mercury column, say we put some more water in, okay, and it will vaporize. When it vaporizes, it pushes the mercury column down. Remember, the total pressure from the air that it can support is only 760 millimeters of mercury. So indeed, because the mercury is only 736 millimeters high, and we know that the air pressure is 760, we know that we have a vapor pressure from this sample of water at 24 torr or 24 millimeters of mercury. Well, why does vapor pressure rise with rising temperature? As we said before, as the temperature goes up, the kinetic energy goes up. Let's look at a couple of graphs. Okay. Here we have a plot called a Boltzmann distribution. The number of molecules is a function of kinetic energy. At temperature 1, you'll notice where the curve is, and there's a certain threshold. Any molecules that have energy over that line who come to the surface of the liquid, they may move into the gas phase and therefore vaporize and they are responsible for the vapor pressure. Now when we raise the temperature up, notice that T2 is further to the right. 
the actual curve becomes much flatter. However, the number of molecules that have the energy that's needed to overcome the intermolecular forces of attraction is increased. This can be expressed mathematically. The ln is the natural log. It's a log in the base E. You may be familiar with log, which is log to the base 10. E is Euler's number. And delta H of vaporization is the delta H vap. R, of course, is the universal gas constant, and T is the temperatures. But here we have to use R in its um, SI form, 8.3145 joules per k mole. And interestingly enough, this is the graph of the straight line. If you graph the log of the pressure versus the reciprocal of the temperature, you will get a straight line. So we can also obviously do some math with this. The vapor pressure of water is 23.8 torr at 25 degrees C. The delta H vaporization of water is 43.9 kilojoules per mole. What's the vapor pressure at 50 degrees? I would suggest you stop the podcast and work the problem. Remember that R is 8.314 joules per mole K, and here we've been given kilojoules for the delta H. Did you get 153 millimeters of mercury? I hope so. That is the correct answer. This equation is the clausius clapeyron equation, and indeed, it has been used to determine delta H's of vaporization by measuring the pressure at two different temperatures.